so I know that um, a lot of your focus is on mindset and mm -hmm. um, getting some shifts and manifestations by changing the way that you think. Uh, before we get into the work that you do, can you just give us some background on who you are and what led you to your own personal awakenings or breakthroughs in your life? Sure. So I am always a fan of telling my story because I hope that someone resonates with it and connects with them as well. And <clears throat> my story has been a very interesting one. I've gone through a lot of adversity, mostly through bullying. I spent a lot of time uh, <laughs> retro retrospectively looking at what went on in my life. And it all led to the fact that I was always kind of the outcast. I didn't really have friends. I didn't know how to connect well with people. I didn't even know how to connect well with myself was one of the realizations I had later. I guess I always realized that I didn't fit in. So I tried harder and that probably made me more annoying than anything. And it continued to kind of push me away from others. So since I was young, I was like, sitting on this outskirts trying to figure out how to get in in middle school it was a little bit more rough in middle school this is you know when kids start getting older and really start getting some hormones going and uh i got bullied a little bit more physically in, in middle school there were times like i can remember i got thrown down the steps once and you know that kind of sucked and then in high school it continued to progressively get worse right so high school is interesting uh, you might have seen those shows where kids get bullied and, and you think it's really like overly exaggerated because the kids get thrown in the trash can and it's like, that's ridiculous. So that actually happened to me, though. Like it wasn't a TV show. That was my life. I was thrown in trash cans. I was pushed into lockers. Uh, I still didn't really have friends. I had one friend and people just didn't accept me. And I probably didn't make it any better. I'm sure I had some part in, in making it worse. And I remember high school was just probably the hardest. High school was where my depression and anxiety was at an all-time high. I started having panic attacks. I even didn't know it at the time. Looking back with the info I have now, one of the things that I experienced was my mom actually used to have to come pick me up from school a lot. And it would be funny because when I would get home, I would feel so much better. I would be, my personality would lighten up. I would play video games. I would be having just the greatest day. But when I was in school, I was sick. I was nauseous. I was vomiting. I, I had all types of stomach issues, couldn't keep food down. And it's so crazy because I didn't realize at the time, right? But that was actually physiological reactions to the stress I was having every day. And so there was also a little disconnect between me and my mom, right? Because she would think I'm faking. It's like, why is it that you're always sick at school? But when I bring you home, you're fine. So I, I didn't even realize that until like, maybe about two years ago, that that's why I was always sick, right? And that was one of the biggest responses that I had. In high school, when things got worse, I started having a lot of suicidal ideation. I was really depressed. I just couldn't see a way out, right? So I would fantasize about creating my own way out. And that obviously didn't make anything better. Now, <clears throat> there was a moment where, and one of the motivational speakers, he says this line, and he says, there has to be a point in your life, if you want things to change, where you have to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. So college was actually that for me. Transitioning from high school to college was where I found my ability to reinvent myself, or at least I thought I did, right? So the funny thing is, if if you look, there's these, these diplomas behind me, or these, these, whatever you want to call them, pieces of paper, and they say Vincenzo on them. And that's not my name. <laughs> so my master plan was going from high school to college was to write Vincenzo on my transcripts so that I could reinvent myself. I thought Vincenzo was a really cool name. And I was like, damn, if only I was named Vincenzo, I might have been cooler. That was my logic as a 17 going on 18 year old. Right. So I, I had this great scheme. I started working out a little bit because I, was, I, was, I wasn't really overweight, but I was a little chubby and people would make fun of that. And I started working out. I changed up my look. I grew a beard, started spiking my hair, dressed differently, and really kind of changed a lot of the externals. So stepping into college was this chance for me to reinvent myself. And it sort of worked. And I say sort of because I got everything I thought I wanted. I got recognition from girls, never had a girlfriend before college, got one in there. I had friends, guys wanted to be my friend. I wasn't the weird kid anymore. And I actually started doing a lot better in college too. Like I really took my grades seriously as opposed to high school where I didn't care. So I did phenomenal in college outside looking in, right? But on the inside, I was still kind of that same kid. I was still feeling like I was weak. Then I started feeling like I was kind of a fraud because I knew I wasn't this cool. 
right? Or at least that's how I felt. I wasn't actually this cool guy. And so I was always worried, like, what if somebody finds out I'm actually a loser? What if somebody finds out that, like, I was I was pantsed by my middle school crush? Like, all these things run through your head, right? And so you're, you're just wondering, it's like, oh, when, when will they find out I'm really a loser? And so I did good. Um, I had two jobs as a personal trainer, as a mental health worker. I graduated in Psych High National Honor Society. I crushed it. had like a 3.8 psych GPA. And then I went to my master's program. And my master's program was cool. I you know, got accepted to every master's program I applied for. And while I was in there, I was studying, getting, getting my master's in social work with a clinical focus. And honestly, that was probably the worst time in my life. The mental breakdowns were occurring very frequently where I was just so incapable of doing anything. I had a therapist. I virtually had him on speed dial because my anxiety attacks were so bad. I actually couldn't even make a decision. So like I would get into a fight with my girlfriend and and she'd be texting me and blowing up my phone. And I'd be like, oh my God, I don't know what to say. I don't want to say the wrong thing. And I would try to call like anxious attack, call my therapist. And that was terrible. That, that should have never happened. But it, that's where we were. And so <laughs> my depression was bad, mental breakdowns, panic attacks at an all time high, couldn't make decisions. And he wanted, you know, he diagnosed me formally, right? He's like, you have depression, you have anxiety, you have panic disorder. I think you should go on medication. I told him absolutely not. I refused to take medication, never would, didn't believe in it. And I pushed back on like just marrying these labels that he gave me, right? Like I believe that I could overcome it. And so I didn't know how, right? Because I was still experiencing all this pain. And so at 23, when I graduated, I felt like now I needed to do something to figure myself out, right? So I quit both of my jobs. I had money in the bank that I saved up. And I decided like, I'm going to take a, a, a little tiny reset. So I took the summer off, right? I graduated in May, didn't work June, didn't work July, didn't work August, just like trying to discover me. And it was so funny because I started doing a lot of things I wanted to, right? I got a bunch of tattoos. I went out, I got a Camaro with a sports performance exhaust. I was gaming. I was hiking. I would text my friends. And I was kind of being a jerk, right? Like my friends were all working at that point and they were in, in their office on a Wednesday. And I'd text them and send them a photo of me on a mountain. I'd be like, how's your, how's your Wednesday? Like <laughs> I was being a little bit of a jerk, but can I ask you, know, you it the, was, the, it was the, all the Camaro and the tattoos, was that for you and the joy for you? Or was that like like a little bit look how cool i am because you want to be that or you want to feel that like or was that authentically what you wanted for you no they, they're authentically for me so i've always been a fan my my dream car is a corvette and uh i was like you know the camaro's close so i got that from me it was like a congratulations for kicking life's ass as much as you went through and the tattoos are actually very significant they are the cherokee story of two wolves so if you've if you've ever heard that story, if you've never heard that story for your audience, I'll sum it up. It's super bridged version is that one wolf is good. One wolf represents bad if we want to label it. Right. And the wolf that wins is the one that you feed. Now, I, I recommend you guys looking up the story. It's much better than my version. But I basically love that story. That was that was actually a start of my journey of self growth, because when I heard that story, I latched onto it and it started becoming a conscious reminder of which wolf do I want to feed every day based on my thoughts, my actions, my habits, my behaviors, et cetera. And so I was like, I want to actually carry this with me forever. And so I went to a tattoo artist and I was like, Hey, can you please take this story and, and turn it into art for me? And, and that's, that's how that kind of tattoo got born. So that was kind of how I was spending my time trying to figure myself out. And the biggest moment that actually really shifted my life was this. And I call it the moment in the mirror and you'll see why in a second, but it was so significant that it actually, I'd say 90% of my anxiety and depression went away in this one moment. And it was so powerful because it was a moment where there was a transfer of power. So here's what happened. It was a day in the summer that I was like, again, just enjoying my life. I was going out, getting anything I wanted. I had money. I spent money like water. Probably shouldn't have done that, but I did it. Had it. So I used it. And I was just still figuring out like, why, why am I not happy? I have a hot girlfriend. I got my like an awesome car. I'm I'm cool. Or at least I think I am. I have this degree. I, I've accomplished like so much, right? So why am I still feeling like this? 
And so I was absolutely frustrated. I got up, I was in my bedroom. I got up, I walked into the bathroom. I was still living at my parents' house at the time. So luckily no one was home because it, it got a little wild in that bathroom. I slammed my hands on the counter and I was just like, what is wrong with me, man? Like, why am I still so upset? Why am I still so angry? Why is everything still so shitty? I have everything. I literally have everything that I could possibly want as a 23 year old. What What's wrong? And I just kind of looked up in the mirror. I, I don't know what made me do that. And I, and I just looked at myself and I was like, oh, I was like, you're, you're Vincent. And that was such a significant moment. I still have chills talking about it. I love this story. It's my favorite because it was the first time in seven years that I actually said my name, like my actual parent given god given identity name and when i did that it was this there's so many things that i pulled from that like that i later understood and had to reflect on but what i understood was in that moment that was me taking my power back because i was i was accepting myself for the first time in like god knows how long right i was willing to just look myself in the eye and be like hey you're vincent like that's who you are everything that has happened has happened everything that's currently going on is a result of what has happened and the decisions you made so let's take ownership of that. And then let's start now creating a life instead of being dragged through it. And when I had that moment, that realization, right? I call that radical self-acceptance. Just everything is just, it is accept it all in that moment. And I was able to do that when I took my power back by saying my name. The second thing was extreme ownership. It's like everything that's happened has happened, but everything that will happen is now up to you because you have the conscious awareness that your current state of living is a result of every decision you made. And so we can continue to make shit decisions and make the next seven years hell, or we can make really good decisions and make the next seven years a life of design instead of a life that you're dragged through. So that was extreme ownership. And then the last two pieces that really came in was this. And this is where I talk about master your mindset and unlock your inner leader, because I believe that's what I did. I had a very honest conversation with myself. And this is why I said it got a little wild in the bathroom. <laughs> I was looking in the mirror and I was like, look at you. I was like, you're you're weak. You People pity you. Nobody thinks you could handle life. You have panic attacks. You have anxiety. You have depression. You can't handle it. You constantly are, are in anguish. You're suffering. You, you're not someone that anyone would ever follow. You're not inspirational. You're not powerful. Like you don't even believe in yourself. Why would anyone believe in you? That's why you created this fake identity because you didn't think you were good enough to, to be anything worthwhile. And so after I had that conversation, I was like, well, I guess the better question now is, is, is this who you want to keep being? Because you don't have to, right? Like first is just acknowledge who you are. Then it's like, do you want to keep being this person? I was like, no, I don't want to be this anymore. All right, who do you want to be? Let's look at that. What does that look like? Well, I want to be, I want to be excited about life. I want to be confident. I want to feel love. I want to be happy. I want to be inspirational. I want to help others. I want to be a leader. I want to be powerful. I want to be strong. I want to be capable. I want people to look at me and be like, damn, that guy's got it. I don't know what it is, but he's got it. <laughs> and when I asked, okay, so that's great. This is who we want to be. Then it comes to self-mastery. It's like, how do we get there? What are the things you need to think? What do you need to do? What do you need to say? What do you need? What are the actions you should take? The behaviors, the habits. And it started like just piecing together and building this, this identity, right? And that's where I talk about leadership because leadership isn't about a title. It's not about a role. It's not about a position. It's, it's an identity you carry and how you show up in life. So then I asked, okay, how do I lead myself? What do I want others to feel when they come in contact with me? How do I show people through example? How do I become this person that is worthy of leading others or that is just worthy of leading himself through life. And so all of these concepts, like I didn't know it at the time at 23, I had no freaking clue. But as I delved back and look, that's where I talk about self-acceptance, extreme ownership, self-mastery and leadership. And that is the big moment that transformed my life at 23 that set me on this path to build myself and help build others. And here we are today.